scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You do not, there is a standard for, of knowledge that you must attain for every result you want to command. So your knowledge is not freelanced. Your knowledge is not arbitrarily. Are we together now? Your knowledge must be methodical. It must be to the degree that will earn you that result. There are many people who are not in complete ignorance, but they do not know enough to produce the result. First Corinthians 8, 2. First Corinthians 8, 2. I'd like us to read together. One, to read. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. I would always give the example of the grading system that we have in our educational institutions. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. I think it stops at F. Are we together? F does not mean zero. F means anything less than 40. Am I right on that? So if you get zero, for instance, God forbid, say amen. Say it again. If you get zero or 12 or 17, even 35, maybe 38, what is the grade? Now, if I arrange all those who got F according to their scores, someone will still be first. Yet, based on the grading system, both the person who did not write the exam, the person who started and slept off, the person who did not read, the person who honestly did his best and did not get the cutoff point, all of them will be in the same category. Can I tell you, little knowledge is dangerous because it makes you believe you are not ignorant, yet you still not have results. You will be in the midst of great people. I know, I know, but your result will eventually drag you to the place of losers. So you need high level knowledge, high level knowledge, not just spiritual knowledge, but the understanding of the cosmos, the laws that make for an excelling life. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You must go for knowledge. The Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. That means the truth is not cheap. It will cost you. Except that money is the least of the currencies you will need to buy the truth. The first currency to buy the truth is hunger and desire. You use honor to buy the truth. You use your attention and your focus to buy the truth. You use meekness and humility to buy the truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Hallelujah. Ignorance is not a demon. You don't cast it out. Ignorance is a state of mind. You solve that problem by introducing superior ideas to your mind. Let me challenge someone. Write the list of the areas that are not working in your life and make it a project after this conference to begin to pursue the requisite level of knowledge it takes to erode ignorance from your life. Are we together? Light. So number one, your spiritual connection Number two, vision. Number three, light. Can we talk about the fourth? 
All right, so let's walk very quickly. Number four. What is the fourth principle that governs acceleration, excelling in life? A transformed mind. Please write it down. The power of transformation, sustaining superior beliefs. Knowledge is useless, except it is used as a tool that transforms you. A transformed mind. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. The Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, the Bible did not say, So he will become. He says, So, so is he. You already are. You are a summation of your beliefs. This is a profound statement. Listen, success is not what you pursue. If you find yourself trying to pursue success, you have failed from the beginning. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. More than what you are doing, your becoming is the greater reason for attracting success. Most people are concerned about doing. So a man, for instance, wants to sort out his finances and the first thing he does is, what business idea? No, you've already failed. You don't make money of business. You make money of your understanding. Your business only is a vehicle that gives your understanding expression to live a rewarded life. So you can do what other people are, are doing, but your understanding will cripple that vehicle and make it of non-effect as far as your prosperity is concerned. Transformation. What is transformation? The name given to the process that makes you become makes you like Jesus Christ in experience. But number two, transformation means the process of replacing the old mundane and mediocre ideas about God, about Satan, about success, about failure, about life. What do you know about God? What do you know about destiny? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about defeat? What do you know about organization? Transformation. Transformation sustaining superior beliefs this is where the concept of mindsets and strongholds come into play a mindset is a sustained way of thinking positively or negatively it is a sustained way of thinking and the bible lets us know and even psychologists and philosophers agree on this one thing that your life will become an expression of the quality of your thoughts or otherwise this is true for various reasons we have sustained all kinds of thinkings chiefest among them being our backgrounds failures of the past our environment are we together now all of these agencies have imparted into us mindsets and beliefs that many times and in many ways can be limiting and destructive this is one of the assignments of the church that when you come to church through the lens of scripture an editing a process of editing begins to happen to your mind so you begin to learn the ways of God Philippians 2 and verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus Christ Jesus don't just desire his results you must have his mindset if you're with me say amen hallelujah this is very profound mindsets the bible says in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 finally brethren paul says philippians 4 and verse 8 whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure lovely whatsoever things are of good report if, the, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise help me complete that scripture think on these things he defines to you the jurisdiction for your thoughts that if you want to live an excelling life you must sustain the ability to limit the sources of your information because as a man thinketh in his heart or his mind he becomes do you know what a stronghold is let me define for you in this teaching what a stronghold is a stronghold is a sustained faulty thinking pattern 
that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that it keeps the victim perpetually thinking in that pathway. It is that state that can make the word of God of non-effect. Are we together? Then open he their eyes. Open he their minds, their understanding. You notice that every time Jesus found blind people in the Bible, he took their issues seriously. Because the issue of light and the issue of transformation is very serious. So Jesus is giving his final words, admonishing the disciples, preparing for his moment of transition. And this is what he told them. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Please look at me. Every time we think of that scripture, we only think of it in terms of signs and wonders. But it says these signs. That means your believing is a dangerous thing because there are physical signs that must follow you. Everything following you is a report card. It's telling you that there is something you believe that is attracting what is following you. If failure is following you, pain is following you, you don't drive it by saying go away. They are respecting your belief. They were sent to come to honor your belief. These signs, the signs of pain, the signs of rejection, the Bible says this sign shall follow them that believe. So when you want to change the signs that are following you, you change your believing. You change your believing. You change your believing. And as you know, the key to transformation is number one, the discovery of the truth. And then number two, using the law of repetition to bury that truth and that superior information until it is embedded within your subconscious mind. You know this. You have been taught this. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Do not downplay this. Every time you have a physical result that is greater than your level of transformation, the law of God's justice will kick in and whatever you are holding must live your life. What appears in your physical world must be consistent with your level of transformation. If at any point, even through a gift or by a gift, you are ever given something that is higher than your level of transformation, events will happen in your life that you call coincidences that will bring you to a state where everything higher than your mindset would deplete until it leaves you. So you give somebody one billion naira, and in his mind, the highest financial realm is 100,000. Through a series of events that even the victim cannot explain, that money will reduce until it comes to that range. Then it will stop. This is the reason why no corporation promotes people arbitrarily without training. They upgrade their minds to match the level of increase that they want to bring to them. This is the fallacy of living a fake life. Living a fake life means that you attempt to pull together physical things in your life that are inconsistent with your transformation. You are only recycling pain again and again and again. Is someone learning now? Yes. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a global ministry. I'm trusting God for a global organization. If your mindset does not receive that, everything in life is built twice. I wish we had time. I would have taken you to Genesis 11 and I would have shown you something very profound. Nimrod Kush called the people together to build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. He motivated them and began to sell that idea to them. And the Bible says they believed. While all of that process of transformation was happening, the Bible says God looked from heaven and saw that the building has been finished. It had not started. It's in your Bible. Give us Genesis 11 and verse 5. Don't tempt me. The Bible says we should resist temptation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 11 and verse 5. Watch this. The Bible says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. It has been finished in the spirit. Before they lay one block on the ground, their minds had built it already. And listen, I hope you know in this scripture, Satan was not mentioned. 
the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. It was just imagination and the power of it. Verse 6. Verse 6. Give us that scripture. This is God testifying about men who were not saved. These men did not have the Holy Ghost assisting them. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one and they all have one language. And he said, This they begin to do. It was finished in their mind. They want to now begin to execute it. And God said, because it was finished, nothing, God himself is saying, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. Not are imagining. They were about to do it, but as far as the mind realm is concerned, it was finished. Everything in life is built twice. The most superior building is the one in your mind. Destroy any physical thing. That is why a prosperous man who loses in business, while you are trying to greet him as though you are coming to mourn with someone who lost a loved one, he's laughing at you and encouraging you because it was only the physical money that disappeared. Everything that is built in your mind, provided it is intact, laugh at anything that tries to take it from your life. It is, it's like pulling a rubber ring. It will always return back. Do you believe what you are hearing? Yeah. So someone can rejoice in your lowly estate. Nothing physical yet appearing. Yet you rejoice. Because by the teaching of the word, coming to church every week is transferring wealth to you. If I ask you how do people become wealthy and you tell me they do business, you are not a good student. No. We become blessed and by wealthy I don't just mean financially you understand what I mean yes the level of excellence and dexterity in your life is is it comes from the superiority of your ideas your degree of transformation so key number one again your spirituality your connection is someone learning already now you see that victory and advancement is not just an impartation it is predictable these are the keys. They are irrefutable. They will not fail. Two, vision. Three, light. Sufficient light. Four, transformation. Let me give you the fifth for this service and then we'll end. Please do not miss tonight. Number five. Are you ready? The fifth key that controls advancement is productivity. Productivity. Value and productivity. You may want to write. Value and productivity. Let me show you a scripture that inspired me years ago and certain covenant decisions came out of that scripture. Mark chapter 1 from verse 35 to 37. Value and and productivity i'll read 35 36 when i get to 37 we'll read together let me read now and in the morning rising up a great while he went out the he being jesus now he was done with his crusades and the bible says in the morning he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed verse 36 the bible says and simon and they that were with him followed after him Verse 37, may that be your story. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. How many men? All men. All men means all categories of people. Businessmen, politicians. There is a kind of value when you carry, only your tribesmen look for you. There is a kind of value when you carry only those within your age range look for you there is a kind of value when you carry only those within your nation look for you but there are certain levels of value and productivity when you carry all men all men that includes businessmen all men that includes diplomats all men all men look at the life of jesus businessmen came to him children came to him in fact ignorant people came to him 
The Bible talks about the men of David, that they came and met David in the cave of Adullam. These were men who were in debt. They were men who were distressed. And the Bible says David turned them to become mighty men. They were so mighty. One time he said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And those men, they went and defeated armies and brought down people. Skill, mastery, excellence. They fetched the water and brought and he said, no, you've shed too much blood. I can't take this. One of them, the man was so mighty the bible said he stood at one point holding the sword he defeated 800 people and the sword would not leave his hands say mastery today's world is a world that does not tolerate mediocrity by any standard whatsoever value and productivity as a preacher you are not excelling just because you are preaching the gospel. No. From a spiritual standpoint, yes. But you excel in ministry to the degree to which you are communicating value. Even though spiritual in context, it is life applicable. Number one, you are connecting men to faith. Number three, you are introducing superior word-based ideas that transform their minds. Ideas that they can translate into results in their daily life. Value. The gift of a man makes room. Watch this. Do you know what it means to make? To make means until it is made, there was no space. Most people just imagine there's a space for me somewhere. There's no space for you. You create it by your value. The table of greatness is always filled. It is your value that brings your own chair and shifts people and qualifies you to sit there. Hallelujah. We're not called to do everything, but in that one thing that can give you an edge in life, you must obtain grace from God and settle to do it exceptionally well. The Bible talks about a young man in Genesis chapter 40 and chapter 41 called Joseph. Joseph had the grace to interpret dreams and with it to profile very superior solutions. And so he had been in the prison for a number of years plus two years added as a result of the carelessness of the wine presser. Are we together? When it was time for God to elevate, to accelerate, and to lift him, God decided to create a problem and shut the heavens over the diviners because kings in those days had men, mediums who communicated with the realm of the spirit. This time around, the heavens were shut over them. And the Bible says, the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. And the king sent for Joseph. They brought him out of his dungeon. And the king narrated the dream. And with the mastery of a professional, he laughed. He said, king, save yourself the stress. I know the interpretation. He said, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And he begins to give him that, that, that interpretation. And now the solution he said, let Pharaoh look for a man who is so discreet and wise. It was a diplomatic way of saying, I dare you, find it. If you will find a man that discreet and wise. You know, you are just coming out of the prison. You have to talk well. So you don't go back there. So he said, let Pharaoh find a man. When he had been searching for men before the arrival of Joseph. Apostle, they don't like me just because of my tribe. I agree, I sympathize with you, but that's not the reason. There is a level of mastery that vetoes gender issues, vetoes all kinds of sentiments. Believe me when I tell you. I was listening to the testimony of the lady who, who shared before I, I, I came up, how that her cooperation was almost pleading with her, giving her three months. Now, in this same Nigeria, are we together? Listen, you can use competence, value, productivity to define your possibilities. Now, listen, please. The door of greatness, one day the Lord taught me this. The realm of greatness has two doors. There are two entrances to the realm of greatness. Number one is the door of value. Number two is the door of need. When you enter the door of greatness through the realm of need, you become a slave there. Because it was your need that brought you there. You are at the mercy of anything and anyone there. But when you enter the realm of greatness through the door of value, even the great will acknowledge you as a colleague. So many of you want to be great. Make every man's need is his point of contact. 
if you come to me begging or you come to me contributing to my life i will most likely pay attention to the one who is contributing to my overall well-being am i right on that this is a very powerful secret there are people who when you see their text you know they're about to beg calvary greetings it's not about the greeting at all this is after one year one year old text messages the rent has expired i'm not being sarcastic just for your knowledge calvary greetings how are you today i hope you are doing well your children fine you say, just send the other text the real text that should come that is the door of need Many of you have been trying to access great men through the door of need. I'm still here. <clears throat> Everybody has a need. His need is his point of contact. Are we learning? Value and productivity. When it has to do with being valuable, you must obtain grace and discipline. Fine tune what you know. Now, in business, like you know, this is a morning session, so I'm at liberty. There is what we call the law of compensation. And the law of compensation in business states that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things. Number one, the need for what we do. Number two, our ability, skill, proficiency in doing what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. That means the rewards that come to you in life, first being financial and then every other kind of reward, it comes to you in response to these three things. Number one, the need or demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do what you do. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. It is true that no man is indispensable, but make yourself so hard to find another you. Don't be so easily replaceable. <clears throat> Don't become a final option when other options have been exhausted and then it looks like they can't find them and say, okay, since you are here, can you help us? You can transit to a rebel. Listen, until you serve kings, don't stop growing. Don't say, I am serving people. If you do not serve kings, you are not yet rising. Apostle, I am a fashion designer. Who are you dressing? You cannot receive the reward of the palace if you are serving outside the palace. And the king sent, the Bible talks about many people who when they were building the temple, there were many people that were brought because of their cunning skills. I made up my mind as a covenant, as a man of God, and one who desires a great destiny. That I will never go anywhere in my life where people just say thank you well done and you have a nice day and I'm not sure that you are needed again no and I knew the key was not just to pray alone to buy the truth be a student of knowledge take away ignorance together with the embarrassment it brings from your life drive two of them away value productivity man of God if you are not on the pulpit, can you speak to businessmen? Can you speak to diplomats? Have you walked upon yourself? Don't bring tribal or emotional sentiments. Are you so competent that patronizing you does not become a risk? Can I recommend you and sleep without feeling guilty that I did evil to the person I recommended you to? I have 10 more minutes let's do number six thank you Jesus is someone changing you see that the you that came to church is not the you living you will look for the you that came and not find it again in the name of Jesus Christ and you see ignorant people will look at your results tomorrow and say you are so lucky so you sit them down and say, I am what I am by the grace of God. But this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than you all. It is the, the ignorance that plagues our world. Every time we see great people, we say they were fortunate. Really? No. 
there are certain results that do not happen by luck. He that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives and accept his strives lawfully. Let's do number six so we end for this morning. Are you ready for number six? The sixth principle that governs the enviable rising of men is called the power of relationships. Pastor spoke about that yesterday. The power of relationships. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Please let's hurry up. 1 to 4. So God blesses Abraham and speaks, proposes a blessing to him. Let's just jump to verse 3. Verse 2 now says, 3 says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4 now. He says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. I like the next expression. And Lot went with him. God never called Lot. Lot heard that God was walking with Abraham. And he said, I'm going with you. And Lot went with him. When you go to chapter 13 for sake of time from verse 1 to 5, you will now discover that everything Abraham had, Lot had too. You would not even know who God called and who followed. <laughs> to the point that there were contentions. But watch this. There is a powerful lesson there. The one who followed made a foolish mistake. He forgot that the anointing was not on him. It was the benefit of relationships. He would have managed that quarrel wisely. The first decision Lot will make outside of the influence of Abraham ended him in Sodom and Gomorrah. He lost everything and he depleted to become like his former self. It took the same Abraham to negotiate his, his preservation with God. There are relationships you must swallow your pride and never fight. Listen, there are three kinds of relationships generally. Number one, there are general relationships we call it. The Bible mandates that we are good to all men. You meet people on the street, you meet people everywhere, greet them, be good to all men, honor all men, then honor the king. Number two, there are seasonal relationships. These relationships are in your life for a moment and for a season. And the key to maximizing them is to discern the value they bring fast so that you are able to receive it. The moment the season for that relationship is done, it will no longer bless you. And you must have the courage to transit when the season, is, the season comes to an end. The third is covenant relationships. These are destiny relationships that the success of your entire life depends on them. An example is your relationship with God. Covenant relationships. These are the kinds of relationships that you need to swallow your pride and for no reason should you cut away from certain people because they have an investment in your destiny that they must make. Are we together now? Let me show you one more scripture. In Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19. Matthew 4, 18 and 19. The Bible says, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren. Until they met Jesus, they were only called brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. Let's read verse 19 together. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you. Stop there please. Follow me and I will make you. That means whoever you are following has an influence on you. Follow me. Just follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you a responsible leader. Follow me and you will turn into an armed robber, respectfully speaking. For someone, there are good people whose destruction started when they started following certain people. Am I right on that? Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will lift you. Follow me and you will go down. There were two boat incidences in the Bible 
They first had a prophet who was running away from God called Jonah. And because of his presence in that boat, people lost their lives. They had gone to do business. They, they almost lost their lives. They lost everything they had. They literally threw away all their investments to preserve their life. And the man who was causing the trouble was sleeping. Is it not in your Bible? Later on, they woke him and said, are you okay? What is, look at this. They, they casted lots and it fell on him and he said, it's true. I'm the reason for this. They said, what do we do now? He said, you have to throw me out of this boat. You thought the people would say, ah, that's too harsh. They threw him out in a moment because they had lost their, they had lost too many things. They said, so you are the one here? Go out so that we can have peace. And they threw him truly. God rescued him later, but as far as their salvation was concerned, he needed to be out of that boat. Versus another story where men were in a boat and there was a storm and another man called Jesus was sleeping. And this time around, keeping him there and waking him was the key to their salvation. Two men in a boat. One was the reason for failure and depletion. Another was the reason for preservation. Beware who you are carrying in the boat of your destiny. Beware. Hallelujah. Everything in life advances on the basis of relationships. Everything. Everything in life. Plants, animals, they multiply and they advance on the basis of relationship. Without relationship, there is no multiplication and there is no advancement. Microbiology teaches us at a cellular level that the way that cells multiply to become an organism, it happens by breaking multiplication repeatedly again and again until it becomes a full organism. Everything in life multiplies on the basis of relationships. I'm not going to teach it, but let me talk to you about destiny helpers. You may have heard me teach it. It's a revelation that changed my life. I will list four kinds of people that you must cry and pray even this morning that God brings to your life. Hallelujah. Destiny helpers are men and women ordained, commissioned, and sent by God to assist you in actualizing destiny. They are not men who freelance your life. They are ordained they are commissioned, they are sent by God into your life to assist you in your advancement and your destiny adventure. Hallelujah. This is very important. When the prophet came to the woman in Zarephath, the Bible says that God commanded him to go there. But when he went there, the woman was meeting him as a stranger. It didn't sound like there was any preparation there, but it was the reason for her, for her preservation. These four groups of people, the Lord showed me by revelation and it has changed my life. Can I run through the list as we wrap up? Number one, divine connectors. This is the first category of destiny helpers you must cry for. Who are divine connectors? They do not have the solution you are looking for, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. They are called divine connectors. An example was the slave girl in the house of Naaman. She could not heal Naaman, but she could take him to a prophet who could heal her. Had he ignored that slave girl, he would die leprous forever. An example of divine, of divine connectors, the men who carried the crippled man and brought to the crusade of Jesus, they tore the roof and brought that man. They were determined that he would be healed. Do you know the problem of the man in Bethesda was not his weakness. When Jesus asked him, what is your condition here? He said, I have no man. I have no man. I am not the angel that steers the water, but I can help you. Everybody who was healed there was healed therefore because there was a man to assist them there. Divine connectors. The key to receiving from divine connectors is honor and discernment because they will always come in a form that is not desirable. For instance, your house help, like the precious woman who gave that story. Divine connectors. If you only respect people of pedigree and class, get ready to learn a bitter lesson in life. A conductor 
who is driving a car can hand over an invitation to you and that invitation will be where that medical condition will come to an end. The key is to discern. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers you must cry for to come into your life are called men on, of influence. These men have the track record and they have the credibility. They have the ears of systems and structures. Their endorsements can become a leverage to your life in a moment. Divine connectors are wonderful, but they are not enough for destiny, for destiny actualization. You need men and women of influence. And I'm praying that God will bring those kinds of people to your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. One signature in Lagos, help him. The man will not write his name. He will write his signature. The person you are to take it to knows what he's seeing there. Help him. Kindly assist. It can be in a paper you find on the ground. Kindly assist. And he, the man is about to throw you out and says, where did you get this? What you are holding is not a paper. What you are holding is history of transforming the man who is holding that paper. How do I throw this man out now? Okay, you come in. Let me tell you the truth. If God says yes and men say no, your yes will remain in the spirit. For that yes to be made manifest, it is both the spirit and the bride that must say come. If God says be healed and there is no man to echo that healing, you will not be healed. The spirit and the bride. God in partnership with men. Number three, gifted men. The third category of destiny helpers that you need are gifted men. Sometimes you just need men of skill and excellence. The assignment of these people is to produce efficiency in your life global corporations all across the globe, they excel today because they have mastered the art of bringing together skillful people. When no matter how well-intentioned people are, if they are not skillful, you will not produce results. If they are not skillful, there will be a lot of waste in your life and your organization. Are, are we together? You mitigate waste by bringing together skillful people. Divine connectors men of influence skillful people and the last of the destiny helpers that you need in your life are called burden bearers these men are very unique people they cannot move you forward but their assignment is to stop you from going backward they are men who love you for you not for your office not for your status when all is said and done, because you see, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I will tell you, according to the law of seasons and the law of time and chance, everybody will find yourself carrying a cross one day. The way to the throne is the cross. Even Jesus, the miracle walking Jesus, got to a point where he was on his way to Golgotha, drained because he had bled so much the Bible says he fell. If Jesus died on the ground, we would not be saved. He needed to die as a curse on a tree. A burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene was now fetched and he came and helped him carry the cross to Golgotha. Even salvation needed the ministry of burden bearers. Can I tell you, woe betides a man that when you are in your down times in life, there is nobody. Divine connectors cannot help you in the day of adversity. Men of influence may not do you much. Gifted men may not help you, but a burden bearer will cry with you. A burden bearer, out of all the people Jesus raised and lifted, there were only two who were with him at the cross, his mother and John. Including Peter who said, I will not go anywhere. He ran in a moment. He later repented, I agree, but as far as the cross is concerned, he was not there. Can I tell you, if you ever believe you are a celebrity, you are, you, are, you are right, but I want you to think well. Out of the many people clapping for you, I hope you have been able to find burden bearers. Because a day will come, those who are saying become king will say crucify him. They ate your bread at the crusade, but they will still say crucify him. They will even go further to say let his blood be on our children. 
that is the, the interesting thing about the law of seasons. There will always be seven years of fatness and seven lean years. He said, this dream you have had twice, it is established. It cannot fail. There is always rainy season. You may have heard me say it, as we call it here, rainy, rainy season always comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. And dry season always comes with a letter from rainy season. I am also coming. It does not matter what season you are in. Every season comes with a letter from the season to come. If you are enjoying seven years of abundance, do what Joseph recommended because there will be seven seasons of famine. And even if you are Samaria going through a season of famine, make sure you read the letter that comes from that season that it will not last forever. There is nothing new under the sun. Have you been blessed this morning? Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Apologies for stretching your time. Just two prayer points and we're done this morning. Lift your hands to heaven and thank him for what you have heard. The Bible says, blessed are your ears for they hear. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is praying. Thank him for this that you have heard. It says, now that you know this, happy are you if you do them. Six keys you were given this morning. Number one, your spiritual connection. Number two that you were given is your, um, after your spiritual connection. What's the second? Yes. What's the third? Light. What's the fourth? Huh? You've forgotten already. What's number five? Value and productivity. What's the sixth? Can I tell you? Hold these keys with confidence. You'll get to a door. You search, you will find the key. You will open it. You will go to a door. You search, you will open it. You go to a door. You search, you open it. I guarantee you, you hold these keys. You will tame life like an animal. The same way men tame dogs and use them for their advantage. Hallelujah. Now, I want to make a request, and that at the permission of your pastor, that if you will allow, I want to please request that you come with a prayer request. If that is fine, to come with a prayer request. Usually, I wrap up my sessions when I have an opportunity to minister to people like this. It's a grace that he's given so that we can agree together as a family of faith that God will bring miracles for people. Sir, will that be fine? Okay, so as you come tonight, it's going to be an extraordinary moment. Please invite. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.